Good morning, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos, live at the Western Idaho Fair, and I'm hanging out with the livestock today. High temperature is going to be in the hundreds. I'll give you a look at today's fair forecast coming up. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Carter, and this morning, for the first time in over 80 years, a tropical storm is sent to strike the West Coast, where the hurricane is headed this morning. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for starting your Friday off with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza over in Caldwell this morning. It is August 18th, 2023. We'll get to your weather live with Vasili in just a bit. But first, new this morning, today is expected to be the last day of testimony in the case of a 2021 Michigan shooting. The hearing will determine whether teenager Ethan Crumbly should get a life sentence. Crumbly pled guilty to murder, terrorism and other crimes last October. He was 15 at the time of the shooting and can't automatically be given a life sentence. If the judge does not order a life sentence, he would face a minimum sentence between 25 and 40 years. Four people died and seven people were hurt in that shooting. And the U.S. is going to send F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. The move will take place as soon as the tra training of Ukrainian pilots is finished. The training program was initially expected to start this month. This report comes after Ukrainian officials have been pushing for the West to send the fighter jets for months as the war with Russia continues on. And Hurricane Hillary headed toward the West Coast and expected to reach Category 4 today. The hurricane is likely to reach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend. It could hit the central Baja California Peninsula by Sunday. Hillary is expected to bring heavy rain to parts of California, Arizona and Nevada with a potential for flash flooding in some areas. The National Weather Service says if Hillary hits California as a tropical storm, it would be the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years. Stay tuned, we'll have more on the incoming hurricane in just a bit. Well, it's finally here, CBS Two Day at the Western Idaho Fair. From noon to four, you get in free with a donation to the Idaho Food Bank. Sarah is live at the fair with what you can expect. Sarah. Ashley, there is a lot to see and do today here at the Western Idaho Fair. We are live in none other than the Beef Barn. And of course, it's going to be a great day ahead. We'll be featuring all of the organizations and vendors that are making their way to the fair today for the official kickoff for CBS2 Day at the Fair. Keep in mind, it's also STEM Day for us. It's going to be a lot of fun, so we hope you guys can make your way out. Let's take a look at some of the information. It's completely free STEM activities for families, thanks to the Idaho STEM ecosystem. It's always a hit. The kids pedal tractor races. They begin at 1.30 north of the Expo building. They'll also be strolling pianos from 2 to 2.30. You don't want to miss that. And the sea lion splash also taking place until 2 o'clock. So really the heart of the fair is, of course, the animals. And we have lots of fun coming on today. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, we're out here making friends this morning in the beef barn. And we have much more to feature coming up. So stay Stay tuned. Back to you, Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. Well, mu music is a big part of the fair. Here's a look at this year's Grandstand concert lineup. On Tuesday, here's Smash Mouth and Spin Doctors. On Wednesday, T.I. performs. Bush takes the stage on Thursday and on Friday, it's Justin Moore. Concerts, they're free with fair admission. And peaches are this year's crop of the year, and here's some peach facts to get you excited for this summer staple. Standard peach trees can grow up to 25 feet tall. Peach fuzz is meant to help defend the peach against, and the tree from harm, such as insects, animals, diseases, and sun exposure. Finally, it takes peach trees between two to four years before they start bearing fruit. And there's also a beer of the year, this year's winner, A.J. Hoberg. His winning beer, the Riverbank Blonde Ale, it's noted to have a clean, citrusy finish. During the Western Idaho Fair, you'll be able to try it yourself. Sockeye Brewing worked with Hoberg to commercially brew his recipe. Just head on over to any booth that sells beer. And if you're headed to the fair this weekend, CBS2 wants to see your photos. Submit them at idahonews.com slash chime in. They might even make an appearance in one of our newscasts. And turning now to developing news, Brian Koberger due in court today at 11.30 a.m. Now, he's the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. Koberger's defense team is asking the court to dismiss the case against him. They claim the prosecution misled the jury by failing to properly instruct them on the standard of proof that is required for the indictment against him. 
They're also asking for another stay in proceedings. This comes after the defense finally provided an alibi for Koberger, saying he was out driving during the time of the murders. And an update on Lori Vallow Daybell, the governor of Arizona, signing paperwork asking for Lori to be extradited to Arizona from Idaho. That's according to the CBS station down in Phoenix. Lori is under two indictments in Arizona. Prosecutors say she conspired to murder her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, and to kill her niece's ex-husband, Brandon Boudreaux. Now, right now, Lori's serving life sentence, life sentenced just last month for murdering her two youngest children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, and conspiring to murder her husband's first wife, Tammy Daybell. Well, an update on a late night wreck. Westbound I-84 at the 10 mile overpass back open this morning. Two right hand lanes were blocked, delaying traffic for hours last night. We're trying to figure out exactly what happened and with how many cars. All we know right now is it's being called an expanded traffic collision. It happened at nine and at least three ambulances and several other emergency response vehicles. They were spotted at the scene. We're, we'll bring you any updates when we get them both on air and online. And rescue teams in Hawaii still searching for hundreds of victims, many believed to be children. New aerial footage shows the widespread destruction caused by the deadliest U.S. wildfire in over a century. The devastation is so severe, the remains that we're finding are almost unrecognizable. Multiple generations living in singular homes. The American Red Cross has set up relief sites around the island and local grassroots organizations also stepping up to help. FEMA has opened recovery centers where those affected by the wildfires can apply for federal help. And stay tuned, we'll have the latest announcements from Hawaii officials on what's next as the recovery effort continues. And turning now to fire season here in Idaho, two fires you need to be aware of. Just 10 miles east of Cascade, a wildfire breaking out Wednesday afternoon. It's growing fast, now at 2,000 acres. And near Chalice, on the western edge of Middle Fork Ranger District, the Chilkoot Fire burning just under 700 acres. Fire crews say it's putting a lot at risk. We'll keep you updated as we gather more information on these wildfires. And residents of Yellowknife in Canada's Northwest Territories, they've been told to evacuate their town as soon as possible because strong winds could push a wildfire toward their highway needed for evacuations. More than 1,000 wildfires are currently burning in Canada. Officials say more than half are burning out of control. At least 5,700 wildfires have burned in Canada so far this year, which is a record number. And if you want to scrap closed primaries in Idaho, Idahoans for open primary start collecting signatures to support the initiative tomorrow at 9 at Kirsten Armstrong Park in Boise. Now, if you go, you'll get training on collecting signatures, then head out to get some. The group needs nearly 63,000 signatures or 6% of voters by May 1st to get it on the ballot. We've got how to RSVP on our website. Now, the initiative would create one primary election for that all parties, voters, and candidates could take part in. The top four candidates would advance no matter their party. Voters would rank the choices. Attorney General Raul Labrador creating new ballot titles for the initiative last Friday after a state Supreme Court ruling against his previous ones. That same ruling not allowing the group more time for more signatures. Well, hey, it's time to dust off your boots. The Caldwell Knight Rodeo is here. Our friends Alana and Chris with Kizza 92.3 have more on the celebration approaching its centennial year. Take a look. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 to tell you about some awesome events happening uh, here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. Would you consider me a rowdy or a civvy? What is uh, more uh, like more laid back than a civvy? Because that would be you. Oh, uh, lazy. Yes, I'm yes. I'm lazy. <laughs> oh, so it's been going on for 98 years. Can you believe it? The Caldwell Night Rodeo happening tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, such a great time. Whether you're a rowdy or a civvy, family or a partier, you're, you're going to have a great time at the Caldwell Night Rodeo.
Well, folks, bringing it back here to the Beef Barn at the Western Idaho Fair. And, folks, it's not only muggy here in the barn, it's muggy all around the Treasure Valley this morning. We saw a few spotty showers yesterday, but today we're going to see mostly sunny skies throughout the day. We may see some spotty showers around the valley later on this evening as well. We may see some spotty showers tomorrow evening. But let's take a look at the fair forecast this morning. We're seeing some clear, we'll see some clear skies right at the start of CBS Tuesday, today around noon. And then by 5 p.m., we're going to be right around our high temperature today at 96 degrees. We'll see some mostly sunny skies. Then by 9 p.m., we're going to see temperatures drop down into the mid 80s and we'll see some light clouds then. But as for this morning, temperature is going to be in the upper 70s as you head out the door around 9 a.m. By 11 o'clock, we'll reach the mid 80s and we'll jump into the 90s around 1 p.m., leading to a high today of 96 degrees. Expected to arrive sometime around 5 or 6 p.m. Now we are going to see some haze over the next couple of days. That haze coming from some fires burning in Oregon and that fire burning near Cascade as well. Our air quality index score is well into the moderate category today with a score of 63. Now this smoke will continue to linger over the coming days. Expect hazy mornings here in the valley and in the mountains as well. The haze will be worse up in the mountains too as it's, it's closer to that fire burning near Cascade. And then we'll likely stay in the moderate category here in the Treasure Valley over the next couple of days, but we'll have to wait and see as fire teams progress on those active wildfires. Now as for high temperatures, today we'll see mid-90 degree highs around the valley. We'll see a high of 96 degrees here in Boise. 96 also looking like the high in Caldwell. 97 looking like the high over in Emmett, and they're going to be in the upper 90s over in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountain, 78 going to be the high in McCall, and 84 degrees looking like the high in Sun Valley today. Thank you, Vasily. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Hurricane Hillary building up speed this morning. What officials on the West Coast are expecting as they brace for impact. Plus, writers and actors in Hollywood are still on strike. The meeting between CEOs set for today before they get back to negotiations. And it's time now for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. This food is rarely eaten at home. Stats show when you do decide to eat it, 80% of the time it's while you're out. What is it? That answer was French fries. All right, let's take a look at today's question. Half of us will not travel without doing this. Hmm, what could it be? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's CBS 2 Day at the Western Idaho Fair. We are here live in the Livestock Barn, and you can get free admission from noon to 4 o'clock if you bring a non-perishable food donation for the Idaho Food Bank. All of your donations go right back into our community, and if you do bring that food and get in free, you can meet some friends like I've met this morning. This is Winston. We're out here in the goat barn, and take a look at him. We actually had to save him. He had a, um, his his bucket on his head earlier. But folks, there's lots of fun and lots of animals to meet as well as, of course, fun things to do. We have the carnival rides, which are going to be a great time. We have new music coming here to the Idaho Fair, as well as, of course, the heart of the fair, which is the livestock show. There's also lots of entertainment. There's traveling acts moving through the Western Idaho Fair. So again, organizations and vendors making their way here this morning so you can get in on all the fun. And of course, we'll be previewing it for you right here live at the Western Idaho Fair. So make sure you stay tuned from 5 to 7 a.m. We'll show you all the great things coming here. And of course, don't forget it's CBS 2 day at the fair. We're getting you in free. It's from noon to 4 o'clock. All we ask is that you bring some non-perishable food donations for the Idaho Food Bank. We're hoping to raise thousands of pounds for Idahoans struggling with food insecurity. But of course, the Western Idaho Fair, not only about helping your neighbors, but having fun. And of course, getting back to our roots, which is agriculture here in Idaho. Of course, these guys, they're sleepy this morning. You can see them here still waking up, but we have much more fun for you coming right here at the Western Idaho Fair. So stay tuned. Send it back to you, Ashley. Hurricane Hillary is threatening parts of California and Arizona. The tropical cyclone reaching Category 3 status yesterday, and the National Hurricane Center expects it to get to Category 4 sometime today. The center of Hurricane Hillary is expected to approach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend, bringing severe weather to the southwest. The city of San Diego's Office of Emergency Services says it's prepared. We'll be in, a, in the lowest level of activation, ready. But as it escalates, we'll start bringing in the under, other individuals to staff the EOC. About 60 miles to the north in San Clemente, crews have been working, hoping to prevent mudslides from striking the area again. Now, if Hillary does make landfall on U.S. soil as a tropical storm, that would mark the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years. 
And according to data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the most recent forecast has Hillary staying as a tropical storm as it reaches Nevada, which is something that's never happened on record before. Well, the head of Maui's emergency management services is now resigning. According to the mayor of Maui County, Herman Indaya's resignation is effective immediately. This comes just one day after Indaya defended his choice to not use sirens to warn residents about the wildfires. That decision, coupled with the troubled efforts to contain the blaze and congested escape routes, has sparked harsh criticism among the island's residents. And Hawaii will get an independent investigator to look at its wildfire response. The state's attorney general says the investigator will come from a third-party private organization. This comes as critics question if emergency management did enough to warn locals about the fires that spread in West Maui last week. Hawaii's governor says this is not a criminal investigation. And California deploying about 100 state and local personnel to Hawaii. One of the fire captains from the Butte unit is a planned section chief trainee, which means he'll be involved in coordinating daily operations for the team. The other fire captain on the team is a resource unit leader. He'll be helping with logistics and resource distribution. It's not clear how long their deployment will last as of right now. Cal Fire says they'll be there for as long as needed. Not only uh, have we been able to uh, manage major fires in California, but now uh, we're, we're getting called up and, and going out of state into different parts of the country. It just speaks to uh, the process that we have put together. Uh, really, these incident management teams are able to manage any kind of an incident, whether it's a fire, uh, if it's a flood. These teams are able to scale up and down as the need arises. They'll be joined by two other officials from the Office of Emergency Services to help with incident management. On top of first responder teams, the state also sending Cal OES debris removal experts and people who specialize in what's called urban search and rescue. Well, the time is here. Sarah and Vasily are out there this morning. The Western Idaho Fair kicks off today. Our friends Alana and Chris with Kids 92.3 tell us more about some of the fun you can expect. Take a look. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 to tell you about some awesome events happening not only just this weekend, but kicking off today, running through the 27th, the Western Idaho Fair. It is fair time, baby. My five-year-old has been waiting for the fair. She's like, I'm saving up all of my money so I can play all the games and ride all the rides. What's the better dessert at the fair? Is it the mm. funnel cake or is it the ice cream potato? Ooh, see, I think it's it matters if you're in the mood for it. It matters if it's the weather. It's true. Like, yeah. there's a lot of dependent. Yeah. But you know what? You should just try both. You should just get both. That's, That's definitely cool. Of course, the concerts are happening as well, including our buddy Justin Moore yes. on the 25th. And the concert's free with your fair admission. Yeah. Bringing it back here live at the Western Idaho Fair, hanging out with the swine right now, right behind me. And folks, it's going to be an awesome day here for CBS Two Day, starting at four o'clock and ending, or starting at noon and ending at four o'clock. You can bring in any kind of non-perishable food for the Idaho Food Bank and get in here free. And folks, conditions going to be great. You'll just have to know that we're going to see some smoke here in the Treasure Valley over the coming days. Today, we're going to see some smoky and sunny conditions, and you can see those clear skies this morning in our live pictures right now. We're seeing in those clear and hazy conditions here in the Treasure Valley and all around the Gem State as well. You can also see those hazy conditions and you can kind of see the East Fire currently burning on East Mountain in that live picture of Tamarack this morning. Now that strong high pressure that's been with us for some time is starting to move away from the Gem State. This all this along with that weak trough of low pressure that moved through yesterday is why those temperatures will drop out of the hundreds today. Now over the next two days we will experience that smoky sunshine with those near average temperatures. Temperatures will likely stay in the low to mid 90s over the next two days before a cool down comes to us next week. Now waking up to mostly clear skies here in the Gem State, we'll likely see those clear skies for most of the day. By the evening, we may see some spotty showers pick up. That'll be around seven or, or six or seven o'clock this tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll wake up to some clear skies, but we'll see some clouds rolling in the evening. Now moving to the seven day forecast, we'll see those high temperatures in the mid nineties, both today and tomorrow. they will be in the upper seventies on Sunday mon and Monday with some showers expected. Then by Tuesday, we'll jump back in the eighties and we'll be in the upper eighties on Thursday in the Treasure Valley. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, mortgage rates on the rise. What's behind the increase that's making it hard for some to pay for homes? Plus, despite high interest rates, some Americans aren't staying put. Why some states are seeing a boost in population.
This is CBS 2 News this morning. Welcome back. U.S. mortgage rates jumped over 7% yesterday to their highest level in 21 years. Just a year ago, that rate was 5.13%. While inflation has been coming down, the surge is a reflection of where those rates have been, according to housing experts. Many elements go into how banks determine mortgage rates, and the Federal Reserve's rate is a major influence. It's very possible that in the short term, interest rates keep sneaking up a little more. We do hope by the end of the year that we're actually going to see interest rates in the 6% range. Unfortunately, I don't think that we're going to see 2 to 3% interest rates. And if we do see 2 to 3% interest rates, we should be looking around what's going on in the broader economy. But when we inevitably do move into a lower interest rate environment, there is going to be more competition in the marketplace. Experts expect buyers to come back, but the question is, will there be enough property to meet that demand? Still, some Americans aren't content to stay put right now. Many are leaving cities with high property taxes and moving to places with lower rates. That's according to a report by Laffer Associates. People are leaving places like Ohio, Illinois, and Western Pennsylvania to states like Tennessee, where the average property tax rate is 0.6%. The report says from 2013 to 2020, population fell in the Cleveland area by 1.2% and in Chicago by 0.8%. Meantime, it's creeping up in Pittsburgh by 0.2% and Nashville growing by 7.3%. You look at California, Californians actually per person, they pay lower property taxes than Texans do. And yet California's population has been shrinking. That's probably due to home prices in both states. Um, So, you know, it's a really complicated issue. Experts adding, in addition to house prices and property taxes, factors such as the job market and weather also having a role to play in people relocating. Well, former President Donald Trump is taking aim at President Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. Biden celebrating the one-year anniversary of signing the act this week, arguing the bill has made rounds in reducing inflation. But Trump comparing the economy now to when he was in office and believes inflation is killing the country. When you look at the inflation, uh, they say inflation's coming down, but we're living with all that inflation we picked up over the last three years. Former President Trump, who is running for re-election, blames Biden's energy policy as the driver of high costs. Well, the CEOs of major studios like Warner Brothers Discovery and Disney, they're expected to talk today about what's next as the writer's strike continues. According to Variety magazine, this comes after WGA members met with reps for major studios on Thursday. Negotiators are still trying to resolve the issues between both sides. The writer's strike has been going on for more than 100 days. The two sides can't come to terms on issues like streaming residuals and staffing minimums. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Brian Koberger is set to appear in court again today. The argument his defense is bringing to the judge. And don't forget about our question of the day. Half of us will not travel without doing this. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Welcome back. The Western Idaho Fair opens today at noon and it's CBS 2 Day. This means bring some food for the Idaho Food Bank and admission during the first four hours is free. Sarah is having fun this morning there and joins us live once again. Uh, Too much fun, Ashley. We wish you could be here, but of course we are kicking off the Western Idaho Fair. The countdown is on. We just have about six hours until gates open. But what would the Western Idaho Fair be without, of course, the animals? We're live in the livestock barn. We're joined by Sophie Studebaker. She is a junior with Meridian FFA. Sophie, thank you for being with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. So introduce us to your lamb project. What is his or her name? This is Fresno. Um, He's a male and he's a Suffolk Hampshire cross. All right, so tell me a little bit about him. How, when did you get him and how long have you been working with him? Um, so I got him. Oh, yeah, get, get friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I got him at the beginning of April. Um, I've been working on him every day since then. Wow. Yeah, yeah he's a bottle baby, so his mom died when he was born. Um, so he's super friendly, he really likes people, which is nice. Um, it's been really fun. It's been a lot of work, but it's been worth it for sure. No, definitely. That's a, that's a lot of work because, you know, you're feeding day in and day out. Can you kind of take us through what a day looks like in taking care of Fresno? 
Yeah, so um, I'm lucky enough to have my teacher, Mrs. Stokes. Um, she's really good. A lot of us in the Meridian, at least, um, we live in subdivisions, so we don't have uh -huh. the ability to live on farms and raise our own animals. Um, she has her farm, and she lets us keep them there. Um, she's nice enough to feed in the morning, so we don't have to get up that early. Um, we are required to go every day after school. Um, each day, me and a group of friends, we walk our lambs around the neighborhood over by the village area. Um, and then we come back and work them for a little bit. And then we feed and measure it. And it's been a lot of fun just learning how to do everything. No, that's amazing. And good morning to you, too, of course, Fresno, wanting to chat with us a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about showmanship and quality? So you're going to be showing for both of those this week, correct? So tell me a little bit about what exactly goes into that. Um, so quality, it's a lot of more just, you know, um, breeding the, with the right lamb and what you want to do. Um, it takes a lot of work. I know Miss Stokes, she selects her ewes, which are the ones that she wants to breed with, and then picks the rams that she wants and hopes for the best cross. Um, that's when it comes to quality showmanship. It really takes a lot of time to get to know your lamb. Um, you got to make sure they're comfortable, um, walking them without a halter, um, getting them to brace, which is when you make them push and get their legs straight. Yeah. But, yeah, it takes a lot of work, but it's been really fun. So. So what's your favorite part about the Western Idaho Fair, if you had to choose one thing? Um, I think it's just getting to show uh, off something that we were, like, a lot of us worked really hard for. Like, this is my first year, um, so it's been a really fun. I'm really excited to show everyone what I learned, I guess, in this last year. No, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Sophie. And we'll be hearing a little bit more from her and Fresno later. But, of course, there's lots more to come from the Western Idaho Fair. We'll be showing you all of the fun things kicking off today. Uh, Thank you, Sarah. Well, music is a big part of the fair. Here's a look at this year's grandstand concert lineup. On Tuesday, here's Smash Mouth and Spin Doctors. On Wednesday, T.I. performs, Bush taking the stage on Thursday, and on Friday, it's Justin Moore. Concerts are free with fair admission. And peaches are this year's crop of the year. Here are some peach facts to get you excited for this summer staple. Standard peach trees, they can grow up to 25 feet tall. Peach fuzz is meant to help defend the peach and the tree from harm such as insects, animals, diseases, and even sun exposure. Finally, it takes peach trees between two to four years before they start bearing fruit. And there's also a beer of the year. This year's winner, A.J. Hoberg. His winning beer, the Riverbank Blonde Ale, it's noted to have a clean citrusy finish. During the Western Idaho Fair, you'll be able to try it yourself. Sockeye Brewing worked with Hoberg to commercially brew his recipe. Just head to any booth that sells beer. And if you're heading to the fair this weekend, CBS2, we want to see your photos. Submit them at IdahoNews.com slash chime in. They might even make an appearance in one of our newscasts. Well, turning now to developing news, Brian Koberger is due in court today at 11.30 a.m. He's the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. Koberger's defense team is asking the court to dismiss the case against him. They claim the prosecution misled the jury by failing to properly instruct them on the standard of proof that's required for the indictment against him. They're also asking for another stay in proceedings. This comes after the defense finally provided an alibi for Koberger, saying he was out driving during the time of the murders. In an update on the Lori Vallow Daybell case, the governor of Arizona signing paperwork asking for Lori to be extradited to Arizona from Idaho. That's according to the CBS station down in Phoenix. Lori is under two indictments in Arizona. Prosecutors say she conspired to murder her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, and to kill her niece's ex-husband, Brandon Boudreaux. Right now, Lori's serving life, sentenced just last month for murdering her two youngest children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, and for conspiring to murder her husband's first wife, Tammy Daybell. And an IRS agent accidentally shot and killed another agent. An official with the IRS's Phoenix office says it happened during a training exercise at a federal gun range. The agent who was shot died at a hospital. The FBI is now investigating and will share its findings with the U.S. Attorney's Office. And an update on a late night wreck, westbound ID4 at the 10 mile overpass is back open this morning. Two right hand lanes were blocked, delaying traffic for hours last night. We're trying to find out exactly what happened and with how many cars. All we know right now is it's being called an expanded traffic collision. It happened at 9 and at least three ambulances and several other emergency response vehicles responded at the scene. We'll bring you any updates when we get them both on air and online. 
While rescue teams in Hawaii still searching for hundreds of victims, many believed to be children. New aerial footage shows the widespread destruction caused by the deadliest wildfire in over a century. The devastation is so severe, the remains that we're finding are almost unrecognizable. Multiple generations living in singular homes. The American Red Cross has set up relief sites around the island and local grassroots organizations are also stepping up to help. FEMA has opened recovery centers where those affected by the wildfires can apply for federal help. And the impact of the wildfires in Maui being felt right here in Idaho. Boise State Corner, Kaunohi Kaniho, speaking on the wildfires on Maui. He's from Oahu and says his family lost their homes to the fires. My family actually lost their houses and cars and everything they had. So they're staying with one of my uncles on the other side of the island right now. So, I mean, they're blessed still. They're always texting us that they love us and that they're so thankful for us just because they didn't think they were going to make it out. So it really opened their eyes to life and the quality of life that we have. Thankfully, Kaunohi's family is strong. They're banding together to help each other out. He's especially thankful for his parents who are working back on the island so he can stay focused on college football. And turning now to fire season right here in Idaho, two fires that you need to be aware of. Just 10 miles east of Cascade, a wildfire breaking out Wednesday afternoon. It's growing fast now at 2,000 acres. And near Chalice on the western edge of the Middle Fork Ranger District, the Chilkoot Fire burning just under 700 acres. Fire crews say it's putting a lot at risk. We'll keep you updated as we gather more information on these wildfires. And Hurricane Hillary is headed towards the west coast and is expected to reach a Category 4 hurricane today. The hurricane is likely to reach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend. It could hit the central Baja California Peninsula by Sunday. Hillary is expected to bring heavy rain to parts of California, Arizona and Nevada with the potential for flash flooding in some areas. The National Weather Service says if Hillary hits California as a tropical storm, it would be the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years. We'll get ready for the event of the year, the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic from Ann Morrison Park. People often say that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, but it's actually the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic and Pumpkin Spice season, which will be meeting for the first time as we send this giant pumpkin balloon up into the air. CBS2 is proud to be your exclusive TV co coverage of the event. It begins Wednesday, August 30th and continues through September 3rd. I'd encourage everyone, if you've never been to the park, to watch the launch. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mateo from 103.5 KISS FM and other radio personalities from Town Square Media will all be there. And we hope to see you there as well. We have a link to plan your visit on IdahoNews.com. Well, folks, it's CBS Two Day at the fair, and as you can see, your forecast for the day at 12 p.m. when the fair opens up, it'll be 88 degrees, sunny and hazy. Then by 5 p.m., it'll be mostly sunny at 96 degrees, and at 9 p.m. tonight, light clouds with 86 degrees. And turning now to your out the door forecast as you head out the door this morning, maybe taking your kiddos to school, it'll be 78 degrees at 9 a.m. By 1 p.m., we're reaching 90 degrees. Reaching our high of the day at 5 p.m. at 95 degrees, it'll stay at 95 degrees through 7 p.m. Mostly sunny and hazy today. And today's air quality, it is moderate because the smoke will continue to linger over the coming days. You can expect hazy mornings in the valley and in the mountains as those fires continue to burn. As of right now, it looks like we will stay in the moderate category for the upcoming days and we likely will not enter the unhealthy category. Good news, but we will have to wait to see as those fire teams progress on the fires burning here in the Gem State. And here's our smoke forecast. As you can see, smoke moving through the area. Now let's turn to our high temperatures of the day. Boise here, it'll be 96 degrees today and Emmett not too far off 97 degrees. Nampa and Mountain Home also 96 degrees. Up in the mountains, 79 degrees in McCall, 79 in Stanley, 89 up in Salmon. And our forecast highs today, we're reaching 96 degrees. Tomorrow, staying right there at 95 degrees. Then Sunday, we're dipping back down for some nice temperatures. They'll be well below average. 
79 Sunday, 78 Monday, creeping back up to 82 degrees on Tuesday. And it's now time for our question of the day. Today's question is, half of us will not travel without doing this. Speaking personally, I will not travel without checking the weather. Always need to check the weather before you go anywhere. So you know what to pack, you know. Well, if you think you know the answer, we would love to hear them. Just head on over to our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, threats of impeachment towards President Biden. But not all Republicans are on board. What they say lawmakers should be focusing on. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 544. Welcome back. We're having a fun morning here on CBS 2 because it's CBS 2 Day at the Fair. This means admission is free from noon to 4 with a donation to the Idaho Food Bank. Now Sarah is back live at the fair and this time with some animals. Ah! Oh, Ashley, we're having such a fun time here at the Western Idaho Fair. The countdown to gates opening ah, is on. Ah, it opens at noon for CBS Two Day at the fair. Of course, it's free from noon to four o'clock with ah, a donation of non-perishable food items to the Idaho Food Bank. But we are here in the livestock barn this morning, and I am joined by a very, ah, very special person. This is Alyssa Re Rebelozo. She is a ah, junior with Meridian FFA. And Alyssa, can ah, you introduce us to your lamb? Uh, this is my lamb, Harley. She is... A market, market sheep. She's a bit talkative. Uh, <laughs> She's waking up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, can you tell us a little bit about how long you've had uh, her and how you've been working with her to prepare for the fair? I've had her since May. That's when uh, I first came and got her. I've been coming around um, about three times a week for about two hours, uh, working her, feeding, and then I also shear and wash her. Um, yeah. No, that's pretty amazing. What is that process like for shearing a sheep? Because this is your first year, by the way, too. So this is your first time doing everything. How was it learning how to shear a sheep? It's not easy. It was It was very exciting for sure. Um, I think the most tedious part was washing her and making sure she was washed well enough to be sure. But after that, it was pretty smooth running, just learning how not to nick her and whatnot. Definitely, definitely. And she looks beautiful and ready, of course, to show. So tell the folks at home when you're showing, because I bet they're going to want to see you out there in that ring. I believe we're showing a Saturday at 1. Yeah. All right, at 1 o'clock. And tell me a little bit about what that preparation looks like, getting her ready for the ring, because she's sheared. You wash her. What else do you do? So I'm going to wash her before the ring, and I'm also going to comb out her leg hair, and then I'm also going to work her a bit, make sure her poses are right, make sure she's pushing and flexing correctly, and just make sure she looks overall pretty. No, exactly. There's a whole bunch of technicalities that go into showing, showing your animal that a lot of people don't normally see. But... As far as the fair, what is your what are you most excited for for this fair? Are you excited for showmanship, quality? Or are you excited about the you know the carnival rides, the food? I'm most excited about the carnival rides and hanging out with people from FFA and just building memories and whatnot. No, definitely. Do you have anything you want to say to your FFA group? Shout out. Um, just that they're amazing and you should totally join FFA. It's totally worth it. You get whole new ex um, experiences and there's so many guidance. It's amazing. No, it, it really is, folks. So if you want to come down here to the Western Idaho Fair, you can see Alyssa and Harley together showing for the Western Idaho Fair. And we wish you the best of luck, Alyssa. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. All right. Well, lots of fun coming from the Western Idaho Fair. Of course, gates open at noon for CBS 2 Day at the Fair. Of course, you can find more information about that on our website. But lots of fun to come from the Idaho Fair, Western Idaho Fair. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. Turning down to developing news, new calls to impeach President Biden. But some Republicans worry that's a dangerous move. Only three presidents in U.S. history have ever been impeached. Now conservatives want President Biden to become the fourth because of potential involvement in his son's business deals. And they're demanding the U.S. House of Representatives move forward with the process soon. Where's the truth? You've got to get to the bottom of the truth. And the only the way Congress can do that party. is go to impeachment inquiry that gives Republicans and Democrats the ability to get all the information. And Republicans are threatening now to do the same for the head of Homeland Security, FBI director and attorney general. But not all Republicans support the impeachment. Minority leader Mitch McConnell, among others, hesitant. The biggest reason the House Republican Committee investigating has yet to find any proof the president has broken the law. And some worry an impeachment could distract from their larger agendas and strategies to try and win in 2024.
And another controversy you've likely heard about the floating barrier in the Rio Grande, but what you might not have heard about is the metal discs in between each buoy. The discs have serrated edges, causing many once again to accuse Texas Governor Greg Abbott of creating unsafe conditions on the river. But their intent changes depending on who you ask. Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro got to see them up close in Eagle Pass. The state says that they're not a danger to anybody. Well, I want you to look right sure at this chainsaw type device they did right in the middle of the coolies. But a former Border Patrol chief says that's not totally accurate. Rodney Scott now serves as the Distinguished Fellow for Border Security at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, a right-leaning think tank in Austin. He says in a statement that, quote, the metal disc on the buoy barrier system deployed by Texas is actually a passive radial disc strictly designed to be an anti-climb deterrent, end quote. These buoys will soon get their day in court. The Department of Justice is suing Texas, aiming to get them removed. Governor Abbott maintains that it's the state's right to put them in the Rio Grande. Well, a now defunct federal jail, which once held mobsters and terrorists, is now being considered to house migrants. The Manhattan Metropolitan Correctional Center is just one of the many locations that New York City's mayor is suggesting to use. The facility has been criticized for its deteriorating condition and was shut down back in 2021 following Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. But city officials believe it could help ease overcrowded homeless shelters where migrants have been staying. An estimated 100,000 have arrived in the city since last year. Well, if you have kiddos at home and you're looking for another fun and educational event this weekend, you're in luck. Our friends Alana and Chris with Kids 92.3 tell us more about an event that you may want to check out. Take a look. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 to tell you about some cool events happening here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. And if your kid likes creative crafts, story time sessions, STEM experiments, Check. maybe free book giveaways. Ooh, yes, please. Yeah. It's a celebration of the young child going on tomorrow. Yeah, Julia Davis Park is when it's uh, going down. All that and, and more educational stuff happening at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, that is tomorrow at Julia Davis Park. Hey folks, back here at the Western Idaho Fair, and it smells a little different here in the livestock barn compared to what you're going to smell when you head out the door this morning. It's a smoky day here in the Treasure Valley. That smoke coming from some wildfires over in central and southwestern Oregon, and we're also getting some wildfire smoke coming from that fire currently burning just east of Lake Cascade. Now it's a clear and hazy morning for much of the Treasure Valley. Much of the mountains also seeing that haze this morning as well. Now that strong high pressure that's been with us for some time is starting to move away from the Gem State. This along with that weak trough, low pressure that moved through the state yesterday is why temperatures will be dropping out of the hundreds today. Now over the next two days, we'll experience some smoky sunshine with near average temperatures. Temperatures will likely stay in the low to mid 90s over the next two days before a cool down comes early next week. Now we're waking up to mostly clear skies around much of the gem state this morning. We'll likely see those clear skies for most of the day. By this evening is where we'll start to see some spotty showers pop up around the treasure and the long valley as well. And then conditions should clear up as we head into tonight. Now tomorrow morning, we'll see those mostly sunny skies. However, clouds will start to rolling in the afternoon and then tomorrow we may see a few spotty showers up in the mountains here in the treasure valley will remain mostly dry we may just see a spotty shower or two around the valley tomorrow night as well now moving to the seven day forecast we'll see those sunny and hazy conditions today we'll see that a.m sun with that evening cloud cover tomorrow high temperature is going to be in the mid 90s but will quickly drop down into the upper 70s on both sunday and monday as we see scattered showers for most of the day and then as we head into wednesday we should jump back into the mid 80s then over in the mountains their high temperatures on sunday and monday going to drop down into the upper 60s. They'll see some scattered showers as well for a, with the potential of some thunderstorms. High temperatures will jump up into the low 70s by Wednesday, and they'll be in the mid 70s by Thursday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News, homelessness is up in the U.S. Why one area in Washington seems to be struggling so much with the crisis, despite heavy spending to try and solve it. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 5.55. Welcome back. Our Sinclair sister station in Seattle, Washington, reporting a rise in homelessness. And a new report suggests this is a national trend touching nearly every corner of the country. King County receiving nearly $1 billion in federal funding for homeless, housing, and community development since 2019. 
Yet the homelessness rate went up 14% in the past year. The numbers of you know percent increases in, in cities and states across the United States at this point um, have been a scary trend. A Wall Street Journal report this week saying more Americans are ending up homeless at a record rate. It lists multiple issues ranging from the explosion of fentanyl and drug abuse in the West to, to a lack of affordable housing. And more cases of the West Nile virus being reported in the West. In Fresno County, California, the Department of Public Health says two people have tested positive for the West Nile virus. Now, health, health officials say they do expect that number to go up. They warn you to continue to protect yourself from mosquito bites. West Nile can bring unpleasant symptoms like headaches, joint pains, rashes, vomiting, and diarrhea. Most people do recover fully with no issues, but about 1 in 150 patients develop brain and nervous system infections that can be deadly. And another option for $35 per month insulin, Amazon Pharmacy, the latest to join the price range. The significant price drop comes after the Inflation Reduction Act capping Medicare insulin product at $35 each month. Some offer discounts at $25 or free to diabetics who qualify. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, Brian Koberger said to appear in court again today. The argument his defense is now bringing to the judge. Plus today, the first day of the Western Idaho Fair, a look ahead at all the things there to enjoy this year coming right up. We'll see you right back here at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos, live at the Western Idaho Fair. We'll see sunny and hazy conditions for most of today as high temperatures drop out of the hundreds. I'll give you a look at today's fair forecast coming up. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Carter, and this morning, for the first time in over 80 years, a tropical storm is set to strike the West Coast, where the hurricane is headed this morning. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for starting your Friday off with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza this morning. It is August 18th, 2023. We'll get to your weather live with Vasily in just a bit. But first, new this morning, today is expected to be the last day of testimony in the case of a 2021 Michigan shooting. This hearing will determine whether a teenager Ethan Crumbly should get a life sentence. Crumbly pled guilty to murder, terrorism and other crimes last October. He was 15 at the time of the shooting and cannot automatically be given a life sentence. If the judge does not order a life sentence, he would face a minimum sentence between 25 and 40 years. Four people died and seven people were hurt in that shooting. And the U.S. is going to send F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. The move will take place as soon as the training of Ukrainian pilots is finished. That training program was initially expected to start this month. This report comes after Ukrainian officials have been pushing for the West to send the fighter jets for months as the war with Russia continues. And Hurricane Hillary headed towards the West Coast, and it's expected to reach a Category 4 today. The hurricane is likely to reach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend. It could hit the central Baja California Peninsula by Sunday. Hillary is expected to bring heavy rain to parts of California, Arizona and Nevada, and a potential for flash flooding in some areas. The National Weather Service says if Hillary hits California as a tropical storm, it would be the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years. Stay tuned, we'll have more on the incoming hurricane in just a bit. Well, it's CBS 2 Day at the Western Idaho Fair, and this means admission is free from noon to 4. We ask that you bring a food donation for the Idaho Food Bank. Sarah is live with some of the animals and their handlers on display. Yeah, Ashley, we're having a great time here ahead of the Western Idaho Fair. It kicks off, like Ashley said, at noon. We're getting you in free from noon to four with a donation to the Idaho Food Bank. We're asking for non-perishable food items, but let's talk a little bit about the best part of the fair. It's the livestock barn. Let's take a look because we are out here with all of the pigs or what we call swine in 4-H and FFA. So all of these pigs here, of course, have been these 
the handlers have been taking months and months of work with these pigs, not only feeding them, getting them nice and big. Most of these pigs actually start out at about 40 pounds. So if you can imagine that, now they're weighing in at up to 300 pounds in some cases. Some 250, that's the lower half. But of course, they're going to be showing their pigs both in market, that's where they sell them, as well as showmanship. And that's where they show off their skills of working with their pigs. So all of that work for all of these months that they've been working with these pigs, it comes to a head this weekend at the Western Idaho Fair. And there's lots of opportunities for you to come see the kids and their pigs in action. Of course, there's also beef, goats, lambs. There's a lot of shows, guys. You can see all of that on our website, IdahoNews.com. But it's going to be a great time. We're talking to even more of the 4-H'ers and FFA'ers from right here in the Treasure Valley. And they're going to introduce them to us to some of their animals as well. It's going to be a great time. So, of course, stick around. We have a lot of fun coming from the Western Idaho Fair. Not only do we have carnival rides, we have music, we have the food. Food, and of course, we have all of the fair animals. It's a lot of fun, folks. So again, from noon to four o'clock, you can get in free on us for CBS Today at the fair. All we ask is that you bring non-perishable food donation for the Idaho Food Bank. So we're trying to help out the community while also having fun right here at the Western Idaho Fair. So of course, we'll be talking much more about all the fun things coming to the Western Idaho Fair. So stay tuned. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you, Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. Well, music is a big part of the fair. Here's a look at this year's Grandstand concert lineup. On Tuesday, here's Smash Mouth and Spin Doctors. Wednesday, T.I. performs. Bush taking the stage on Thursday. And on Friday, it's Justin Moore. Concerts are free with your fair admission. And peaches are this year's crop of the year. Here are some peach facts to get you excited for this summer staple. Standard peach trees can grow up to 25 feet tall. Peach fuzz, that's meant to help defend the peach and the tree from harm, such as insects, animals, diseases, and sun exposure. Finally, it takes peach trees between two to four years before they start bearing fruit. And there's also a beer of the year. This year's winner, A.J. Hoberg, his winning beer, the Riverbank Blonde Ale. It's noted to have a clean, citrusy finish to it. During the Western Idaho Fair, you'll be able to try it yourself. Sockeye Brewing worked with Hoberg to commercially brew his recipe. Just head to any booth that sells beer. And if you're heading to the fair this weekend, CBS2 wants to see your photos. Submit them at IdahoNews.com slash chime in. They might even make an appearance in one of our newscasts. And turning now to developing news, Brian Koberger due in court today at 11.30 a.m. He's the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. Koberger's defense team is asking the court to dismiss the case against him. They claim the prosecution misled the jury by failing to properly instruct them on the standard of proof that's required for the indictment against him. They're also asking for another stay in proceedings. It comes after the defense finally provided an alibi for Koberger, saying he was out driving during the time of the murders. And an update on a late night wreck, westbound I-84 at the 10 mile overpass back open this morning. Two right hand lanes were blocked, delaying traffic for hours last night. We're trying to figure out exactly what happened and with how many cars involved. All we know right now, it's being called an expanded traffic collision. It happened at 9 and at least three ambulances and several other emergency response vehicles were spotted at the scene. We'll bring you any updates when we get them, both on air and online. Rescue teams in Hawaii still searching for hundreds of victims, many believed to be children. New aerial footage shows the widespread destruction caused by the deadliest U.S. wildfire in over a century. The devastation is so severe, the remains that we're finding are almost unrecognizable. Multiple generations living in singular homes. The American Red Cross has now set up relief sites around the island and local grassroots organizations also stepping up to help. FEMA has opened recovery centers where those affected by the wildfires can apply for federal help. Stay tuned, we'll have the latest announcements from Hawaii officials on what's next as the recovery effort there continues on. And turning now to wildfire season here in Idaho, there's two fires you should be aware of. Just 10 miles east of, east of Cascade, a wildfire breaking out Wednesday afternoon. It's growing fast, now at 2,000 acres. And near Chalice, on the western edge of the Middle Fork Ranger District, the Chilkoot Fire burning just under 700 acres. Fire crews say it's putting a lot at risk. We'll keep you updated as we gather more information on these wildfires. 
Well, if you want to scrap closed primaries here in Idaho, Idahoans for Open Primaries start collecting signatures to support that initiative tomorrow at 9 at Kristen Armstrong, Armstrong Park in Boise. Now, if you go, you'll get training on collecting signatures, then head out to go get some. The group needs nearly 63,000 signatures or 6% of voters by May 1st to get it on the ballot. We've got how to RSVP on our website. Now, the initiative would create one primary election all parties, voters, and candidates could take part in. The top four candidates would advance no matter their party. Voters would rank those choices. Attorney General Raul Labrador creating new ballot titles for the initiative last Friday after a state Supreme Court ruling against his previous ones. That same ruling not allowing the group more time for signatures. Well, it's time to dust off your boots. The Caldwell Night Rodeo is here. Our friends Alana and Chris with Kids 92.3 have more information on the celebration approaching its centennial year. Take a look. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 to tell you about some awesome events happening uh, here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. Would you consider me a rowdy or a civvy? What is uh, more uh, like more laid back than a civvy? Because that would be you. Oh, a uh, lazy. Yes, I'm yes. A lazy. No. So it's been going on for 98 years. Can you believe it? The Caldwell Night Rodeo happening tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, such a great time. Whether you're a rowdy or a civvy, family or a partier, you're going to have a great time at the Caldwell Night Rodeo. Hey folks, back here at the Western Idaho Fair, and I'm joined by two guests right now. I'm joined with Peyton and a boy named Sue here. Sue is 18 months old. You can see Sue and so much other livestock here at the Western Idaho Fair. It's CBS Two Day at the Fair. You can come in from 12 to 4 and come in for free with the donation of the Idaho Food Bank, and you could possibly meet Sue as well. Now, for the fair today, we are going to see some clear skies with that smoke in the air over the next couple of days as well. But let's move over to the fair forecast because temperatures are going to be around 88 degrees at noon. We'll jump up to 96 degrees around 5 p.m. That's looking like our high today. We'll see some mostly sunny skies then. And then by 9 p.m., those temperatures are going to drop down to 86 degrees with some light cloud cover expected. Now, as you head out the door this morning, temperatures are going to be around 78 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump up into the mid 80s around 11 o'clock and we'll jump into the 90s around 1 p.m., leading to that high today of 96 degrees. Expected to arrive sometime between 5 and 6 p.m. Now, with those fires burning over in Oregon and that fire burning near Cascade, our air quality index scores well into the moderate category today with a score of 63. Now this smoke will continue to linger over the coming days. Expect hazy mornings in the valley and over in the mountains as that fire continues to burn. I don't know if you guys just heard Sue there. She just made a sound. But uh, as for now, it's looking like we're going to stay in the moderate category over the next coming days and we will likely not enter the unhealthy category as well. Now high temperatures today going to be in the mid 90s. See high of 96 degrees here in Boise. A little bit warmer over in Ontario. They'll be approaching 100 degrees today and then up in the mountains 84 in Sun Valley and 78 in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 610 this Friday morning, let's check in with Debbie McAllister at our drive. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. Happy Friday. We have some northbound traffic on Meridian Road this morning, of course, but it's a little heavier between Amity and the freeway. And we also have some heavy eastbound traffic on Amity between Meridian Road and Locust Grove. And just a little bit of extra traffic on Eagle Road between the freeway and Pine Avenue. From the News Talk KBY Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. Some important things to remember as you hit the road this morning. And of course, when you hop in the car to stay up to date on your drive, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Hurricane Hillary is building up speed this morning. What officials on the West Coast are expecting as they brace for impact. Plus, writers and actors in Hollywood are still on strike. The meeting between CEOs set for today before they get back to negotiations. And it's time for your Friday morning question of the day. But first, let's take a look at yesterday's question. This food is rarely eaten at home. Stats show when you do decide to eat it, 80% of the time it's while you're out. What is it? That answer was French fries. All right, let's take a look at today's question. Half of us will not travel without doing this. What is it? 
Hey guys, we are here at the Western Idaho Fair, and where will we be other than the Livestock Barn? Of course, the countdown is on. Gates open at noon here at Expo Idaho, and it's going to be a great time. This morning, we're meeting lots of different 4-H and FFA products, or projects, rather. I'm joined by Amber Mutt, and Amber, thanks for being with us. We're going to do a little bit of a walking interview today. Okay. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about which 4-H group you're with. I am in a swine club called Star Superiors, mm -hmm. and I have been in here for three years now. Oh, wow. And, yeah. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your pig. Introduce us. What's its name? His name is Hank. Hank. Love it. Tell us how old Hank is. How long have you been working with him? I've been working with him about four months. Four months? Yeah. I was going to say, how heavy is he? What did he weigh in at? He weighed in at 320. Oh, 320. That's great. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing here this week. Because you would not only have market, but you have showmanship. So market is where you sell your pig. And then showmanship is where you show them off. Which one do you enjoy the most? I think showmanship. Showmanship? Can you tell me why? Um, I feel like there's no straight reason for me. Yeah. Um, I think... I just like it the most. No, definitely. It's a lot of fun. And a big part of it is obviously getting ready and getting your pig ready. And you actually washed your pig, got it all ready for us today. Can you explain that process? How long does that take? It, I mean, it depends on how long you want it to take. Yeah. For me, it probably took like five minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're a I, pro. <laughs> That's awesome. So can you tell me what is your favorite part of doing swine? You've done it for three years. Can you choose just one thing? I would probably say just being able to raise and show my own animal. Yeah. No, that's huge. It's a huge responsibility because you're feeding them day in and day out. Of course, getting them ready. How long did you work with your pig for? How, how many hours total? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, no, it adds up. Yeah. Say, it's all, he's also okay. making some friends as well. I'll move out of his yes. way so we can get a good view of him. But. When are you going to be showing also so the folks at home can come see Amber and I will be showing tonight at six o'clock in quality and tomorrow at I believe 9 a.m. 9 a.m. OK, bright and early, folks. So if you want to see Amber and, of course, her pig in action, come on down to the Western Idaho Fair. It's going to be lots of fun. And, of course, you get a little sneak peek this morning. And it's CBS 2 Day at the Fair, so we're getting you in free from noon to 4 o'clock. All we ask is that you bring a non-perishable food donation for the Idaho Food Bank. We're going to send it back to you, Ashley, but much more fun coming from the Western Idaho Fair. Thank you, Sarah. Turning now to developing news, Hurricane Hillary is threatening parts of California and Arizona. The tropical cyclone reaching Category 3 status yesterday, and the National Hurricane Center expects it to get to Category 4 sometime today. The center of Hurricane Hillary is expected to approach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend, bringing severe weather to the southwest. The city of San Diego's Office of Emergency Services says it is prepared. We'll be in, a, in the lowest level of activation, ready. But as it escalates, we'll start bringing in the under, other individuals to staff the EOC. About 60 miles to the north in San Clemente, crews have been working, hoping to prevent mudslides from striking in the area again. Now, if Hillary does make landfall on U.S. soil as a tropical storm, that would mark the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years, according to data from the Na National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The most recent forecast has Hillary staying as a tropical storm as it reaches Nevada, which is something that has never happened on record before. And the head of Maui's emergency management services is now resigning. According to the mayor of Maui County, Herman Ndaya's resignation is effective immediately. It comes just one day after Ndaya defended his choice to not use sirens to warn residents about the wildfires. That decision, coupled with the troubled efforts to contain the blaze and congested escape routes, that sparked some harsh criticism among the island's residents. And Hawaii will get an independent investigator to look at its wildfire response. The state's attorney general says the investigator will come from a third-party private organization. This comes as critics question if emergency management did enough to warn locals about the fires that spread in West Maui last week. Hawaii's governor says this is not a criminal investigation. 
Well, folks, back here at the Western Idaho Fair, and it smells much different than what it's going to smell like when you head out the door right now. I'm standing right next to Nugget, and Nugget got a little shy when I came up to the door, but you can beat Nugget and any of these other goats or any livestock here as you head to the Western Idaho Fair today. Today is the opening day, and we should see lots of sunshine along with those hazy conditions today. You'll likely smell some smoke as you head out the door this morning. We're seeing those hazy conditions all around the Gem State today, not only here in the Treasure Valley, but up in the mountains. They're seeing an even more abundant amount of smoke. Now, that strong high pressure system that's been with us for some time is starting to move away from the gem state. This along with a weak trough of low pressure that moved through the state yesterday is why those high temperatures will drop out of the hundreds today. Now, over the next two days, we'll see some smoky sunshine with near average highs. Temperatures will likely stay in the low to mid 90s over the next two days before a cool down comes early next week. Now, we're waking up to those mostly clear skies around the gem state. We'll likely see mostly clear skies throughout the morning. But by the afternoon and early evening, we may see some light cloud cover and we may see a spotty shower or two around six or seven o'clock this evening around the Treasure Valley. Then tomorrow morning we'll see some clear skies. We'll see some partly cloudy skies rolling in the afternoon. We'll likely see those partly cloudy skies through the evening. Now as for high temperatures, we're going to drop down from those 90 degree highs down into the upper 70s on Sunday and Monday as we see some showers roll in. Temperatures will jump back up into the mid 80s by Wednesday as some sunshine returns. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperatures on Sunday and Monday and on Tuesday going to drop down into the upper 60s as some precipitation moves in. Then those high temperatures should jump into the mid 70s by Thursday. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in on a traffic update from Debbie McAllister. We have a little bit of extra traffic on Meridian Road northbound as you head up towards Amity and then it's a little congested up to the freeway. Starting to see some heavier traffic on Eagle Road northbound southbound between Franklin and Overland. And Pine is looking a little heavy heading over to Fair, uh, Fairview over to Eagle, Eagle Road. From the KPOY Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your Friday morning, start it off with some team traffic updates on KBOY. You can find those on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, mortgage rates on the rise. What's behind the increase that's making it hard for some to pay for homes? Plus, despite high interest rates, some Americans are not staying put. Why some states are seeing a boost in population. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 625. Welcome back. U.S. mortgage rates jumped over 7% yesterday to their highest levels in 21 years. Now, just a year ago, that rate was 5.13%. While inflation has been coming down, the surge is a reflection of where those rates have been, according to housing experts. Many elements go into how banks determine mortgage rates, and the Federal Reserve's rate hike is a major influence. It's very possible that in the short term, interest rates keep sneaking up a little more. We do hope by the end of the year that we're actually going to see interest rates in the 6% range. Unfortunately, I don't think that we're going to see 2 to 3% interest rates. And if we do see 2 to 3% interest rates, we should be looking around what's going on in the broader economy. But when we inevitably do move into a lower interest rate environment, there's going to be more competition in the marketplace. Experts expect buyers to come back, but the question is, will there be enough property to meet that demand? Still, some Americans are not content to stay put right now. Many are leaving cities with high property taxes and moving to places with lower rates. That's according to a report by Laffer Associates. People are leaving places like Ohio, Illinois, and western Pennsylvania to states like Tennessee, where the average property tax rate is 0.6%. The report says from 2013 to 2020, population fell in the Cleveland area by 1.2% and in Chicago by 0.8%. Meantime, it's creeping up in Pittsburgh by 0.2% and Nashville growing by 7.3%. Well, the CEOs of major studios like Warner Brothers, Discovery and Disney, they're expected to talk today about what's next as the writer's strike continues. According to Variety magazine, this comes after WGA members met with reps for major studios on Thursday. Negotiators are still trying to figure out how to resolve issues between both sides. The writer's strike has been going on for more than 100 days now. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Brian Koberger said to appear in court again today. The argument his defense is bringing to the judge. And don't forget about our Friday morning question of the day. Half of us will not travel without doing this. What is it? 
We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Welcome back. The Western Idaho Fair opens up today at noon and it's CBS 2 Day. This means bring some food for the Idaho Food Bank and admission during the first four hours is free. Sarah is having some fun this morning there and she joins us live once again. Yeah, Ashley, we've made some friends out here in the pig barn. This is Ryle and Court, and they're 4-H'ers with the Crafty Critters 4-H group. Thanks for being up with us this morning, boys. So, Ryle, I'll start with you. Can you introduce your pigs to us? Uh, this is Hamhawk. He is my Barrow boy. She is Diesel. She is my girl. She is my girl, Gilt. He will go to market. She's going to showmanship. And the, the market show is today today. Okay, so you can see them right here today working. Let's go over to Court real quick because Court, you're telling me this is your first year doing pig, correct? So how has it been for you? Uh, it's been really good and a lot of learning, showing pigs and stuff. Yeah, well we appreciate you being up so early for us. So are you also showing today? Uh, yes, I also am showing today. All right, getting up and early to do some showing. So do you guys both do market as well as showmanship? There are two different sides. Yes, we do. Yes. What is your favorite? Do you enjoy market or showmanship more? Uh, probably market. Can you tell me why? Um, because it's a little easier to show in and showmanship is a little bit harder to yeah, show yeah. in. It takes so. some time. Also, I completely forgot. Let's introduce your pig as well. So what is this one's name? Um, my pig's name is Fred. Okay. And how, can you tell us about their breed as well? What um, is he? He, the breed is a blue butt pig. I was going to say, and you can see that very apparently with their nice blue butt. So, of course, they will be here all throughout the Western Idaho Fair. There's going to be lots of fun, of course, market and showmanship happening. You can find all that information on IdahoNews.com. But I'm going to come back over to you, Ryle. Can you tell us a little bit about all of the work that went into getting your pigs here today? So we got them around April, and we, we've been feeding them a custom mix. She eats something different, but so we are... Um, that was kind of messy, really messy. Mm -hmm. They around to the end here. They China made giant mud puddles. Yeah, and can you tell can you tell everybody why they need the mud puddles to keep cool? Well, pigs don't sweat except on their nose, so so they that they're necessarily really just sort of clean animals, mm -hmm. uh, and they're just they need the mud's cool, so it's better than. It's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, no, it's all definitely better than nothing, especially with the heat headed our way. Thank you, boys, so much. And again, you can see them showing live today right here at the Western Idaho Fair. And hey, if you want to get in free, it is CBS 2 Day at the fair from noon to 4 o'clock. Admission is on us. All we ask is that you bring some non-perishable food for the Idaho Food Bank. And then you can come meet some friends right here at the Western Idaho Fair. It's going to be a great time. We have all the information you need to know on IdahoNews.com. But thank you guys so much for being with us this morning. Ashley, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you, Sarah. And mu music, also a big part of the fair. Here's a look at this year's Grandstand concert lineup. On Tuesday, here's Smash Mouth and Spin Doctors. Wednesday, T.I. performs. Bush taking the stage on Thursday. And on Friday, it's Justin Moore. Concerts are free with your fair admission. And peaches are this year's crop of the year. Here are some fun facts to get you excited for this summer staple. Standard peach trees can grow up to 25 feet tall. Peach fuzz is meant to help defend the peach and the tree from harm, such as insects, animals, diseases, and sun exposure. Finally, it takes peach trees between two to four years before they start bearing fruit. And there's also a beer of the year. This year's winner, A.J. Hoberg, his winning beer, the Riverbank Blonde Ale, it's noted to have a clean, citrusy finish. During the Western Idaho Fair, you'll be able to try it yourself. Sockeye Brewing worked with Hoberg to commercially brew his recipe. Just head to any booth that sells beer. And if you're heading to the fair this weekend, CBS2 wants to see your photos. Submit them at IdahoNews.com slash chime in. They might even make an appearance in one of our newscasts, so keep an eye out. 
And turning now to developing news, Brian Koberger is due in court today at 11.30 a.m. He's the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. Koberger's defense team is asking the court to dismiss the case against him. They claim the prosecution misled the jury by failing to properly instruct them on the standard of proof that's required for the indictment against him. They're also asking for another stay in proceedings. This comes after the defense finally provided an alibi for Koberger, saying he was out driving during the time of the murders. And we bring you an update on a late night wreck. Westbound I-84 at 10 mile overpass. It's back open this morning. Now two right hand lanes were blocked last night, delaying traffic for hours. We're trying to figure out exactly what happened and how many vehicles were involved. All we know right now, it's being called an expanded traffic collision. It happened at nine and at least three ambulances and several other emergency response vehicles responded at the scene. We'll bring you any updates we get when we get them both on air and online. And rescue teams in Hawaii still searching for hundreds of victims, many believed to be children. New aerial footage shows the widespread destruction caused by the deadliest U.S. wildfire in over a century. The devastation is so severe, the remains that we're finding are almost unrecognizable. Multiple generations living in singular homes. The American Red Cross has set up relief sites around the island and local grassroots organizations are also stepping up to help. FEMA has opened recovery centers where those affected by the wildfires can apply for federal help. And the impact of the wildfires in Maui being felt right here in Idaho. Boise State Corner, Kaunohi Kaniho, speaking on the wildfires on Maui. He's from Oahu and says his family lost their homes to those fires. My family actually lost their houses and cars and everything they had, so they're staying with one of my uncles on the other side of the island right now. So, I mean, they're blessed still. They're always texting us that they love us and that they're so thankful for us just because they didn't think they were going to make it out. So it really opened their eyes to life and the quality of life that we have. Thankfully, Kaanohi's family is strong. They're banding together to help each other out. He's especially thankful for his parents who are working back on the islands so he can stay focused on college football. And turning now to fire season right here in Idaho, there's two fires that you need to be aware of. Just 10 miles east of Cascade, a wildfire breaking out Wednesday afternoon. Now this fire is growing fast now at nearly 2,000 acres. And near Chalice on the western edge of the Middle Fork Ranger District, the Chilkoot Fire burning just under 700 acres. Fire crews say it's putting a lot at risk. We will keep you updated as we gather more information on these wildfires. And Hurricane Hillary heading toward the west coast and it's expected to reach Category 4 today. The hurricane is likely to reach Mexico's Baja Peninsula this weekend. It could hit the central California Baja California Peninsula by Sunday. Hillary is expected to bring heavy rain to parts of California, Arizona, even Nevada, with the potential for flash flooding in some areas. The National Weather Service says if Hillary hits California as a tropical storm, this would be the first time that's happened in nearly 84 years. We'll get ready for the event of the year, the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic from Ann Morrison Park. People often say that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, but it's actually the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic and Pumpkin Spice season, which will be meeting for the first time as we send this giant pumpkin balloon up into the air. CBS2 is proud to be your home for exclusive TV coverage of the event. It begins Wednesday, August 30th and continues on through September 3rd. I'd encourage everyone, if you've never been to the park, to watch the launch. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mateo from 103.5 KISS FM and other radio personalities from Town Square Media will all be there. And we hope to see you there as well. We have a link to plan your visit on IdahoNews.com. Well, folks, I'm live at the fair right now, and let's take a look at the fair forecast. We are going to see clear skies right at the start of CBS two day at noon. We'll see temperatures around 88 degrees. We'll just see some smoke in the air as well, and then we'll see some mostly clear skies as we reach our high temperature of 96 degrees around 5 p.m. Then those temperatures should drop down to 86 degrees with some light cloud cover around 9 p.m. Now, as you head out the door this morning, temperature is going to be in the upper 70s around 9 a.m. We'll jump up to 84 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today around 5 or 6 p.m. Now, with fires burning in Oregon and that fire burning 
and near Cascade, our air quality index score is well into the moderate category today with a score of 63. Smoke will continue to linger over the coming days. Expect hazy mornings in the valley and over in the mountains, especially over in the mountains. As of now, it looks like we'll stay in the moderate category for the coming days, but we'll have to wait and see as fire teams progress. Now, as for high temperatures, today we'll see a high of 96 degrees in Boise and over in Caldwell. Over in Ontario, they're going to see those high temperatures approaching 100 degrees. And then moving up to the mountains, 78 over in McCall and 84 going to be the high in Sun Valley. Then moving to the five-day forecast, those high temperatures are going to stay in the mid-90s tomorrow, but then we'll see that huge drop in temperatures. Temperature is going to drop down into the upper 70s on Sunday. We'll likely stay in the upper 70s on Monday, but then we'll start to see those high temperatures warm up. We'll be in the mid-80s on Tuesday, and temperatures should or we'll be in the low 80s on Tuesday, and temperatures should warm into the mid to upper 80s as we head throughout next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Debbie McAllister at our drive. Some extra traffic on Meridian Road northbound between Victory Road and Overland Road. And five mile northbound and southbound, we've got utility work at Overland, and that is blocking all the lanes. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Friday morning, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And it's time now for our question of the day. For it is half of us will not travel without doing this. I'm going to go with checking the weather, but let's see what folks at home have to say. Kirby, going to the bathroom before they leave, always important to remember. Linda, checking the weather or the forecast. I like your thinking, Linda. Doug, bringing a teddy bear. Hey, always need some comfort on your travels. Well, if you think you know the answer, share your guesses on our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer in about 15 minutes at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, threats of impeachment towards President Biden. But not all Republicans are on board. What they say lawmakers should be focusing on. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 644. Welcome back. New calls to impeach President Biden, but some Republicans worry that's a dangerous move. Only three presidents in U.S. history have ever been impeached. Now conservatives want President Biden to become the fourth because of potential involvement in his son's business deals. And they're demanding the U.S. House of Representatives move forward with the process soon. Where's the truth? You've got to get to the bottom of the truth. And the only way Congress can do that is go to impeachment inquiry that gives Republicans and Democrats the ability to get all the information. And Republicans are threatening now to do the same for the head of Homeland Security, FBI director and attorney general. But not all Republicans support impeachment. Minority leader Mitch McConnell, among others, hesitant. The biggest reason, the House Republican Committee investigating has yet to find any proof the president has broken the law. And some worry an impeachment could distract from their larger agendas and strategies to try and win in 2024. Well, at noon today, the Western Idaho Fair begins. It's CBS Two Day and Sarah's joining us with tons of fun. Sarah. Oh, Ashley, we've been having so much fun all morning at the Western Idaho Fair, and I am joined by none other than the man himself, Bob Batiste. He is the executive director of the Western Idaho Fair, the man behind the mission. <laughs> we are so thankful to have you here today, Bob. Well, thank you for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. It's nice to have see, uh, Channel 2 here with us on our usual opening Friday. I know. It's crazy. We've done this a couple years, and we're back once again, but we have more time for you to get in free to the Western Idaho Fair. It's now from noon to 4 o'clock, and Bob, one of the cool things about the Western Idaho Fair and us doing CBS Today is because it all goes back to the community, to the Idaho Food Bank, of course. We're asking for non-perishable food items. Can you talk a little bit about why that's important and why, why we're giving back to the community? Why we're, why we're doing this while having fun at the fair? Well, the fair is all about agriculture and people need food to eat. And so we think this is a good marriage for us to sit there and partner with the food bank, you guys to help promote it and get people some food that they are desperately needing right now. So this is pretty cool for us. 
Yeah, no, the fair, that's really the backbone of Idaho in itself. So, of course, it's the backbone of the fair. And a lot of people now, you know, they're learning that food comes from a grocery store. So at the same time, this is really teaching them and bringing them back to see, you know, how really you get you get food to the grocery store. There's a whole process behind that. Oh, yeah. Carn forks just don't come from a box. <laughs> no, milk doesn't come from a carton. There's a whole process, and we believe in agriculture and supporting agriculture because as you can see, the temperature around here, food's going to become very important in our lives. No, definitely. And it is going to be a toasty day today, so just make sure you're staying cool. But the one thing we do want you to remember is from, can you tell them, Bob, it's from noon to four. What are we doing today? We're doing non-perishable items, and you get in for free. So come on down here and have a good time on opening day. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. We're hoping to raise thousands, thousands of pounds for food. We've yep. done it before. We're going to do it again, Bob. That's right. We're going to give a little extension on the time, too, to make that happen. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to come in free to the Western Idaho Fair, it's CBS Today as we kick it off again from noon to four o'clock bring non-perishable food items to donate to the idaho food bank and of course you can get in free so say it's going to be a great time bob can you tell folks a little bit about what your favorite part of the fair is what if you could if you could choose one thing i know it's hard well that's a hard question for me to solve but um i'm pretty happy today with we got this new stem system that we're going to put out yeah. there that you guys are sponsoring and i think it's really important that it ties into agriculture and the future of our kids and so we have a lot of new exciting things that are happening on the ground some new food stands a couple new rides so come on out and make it a day oh yeah my stomach's rumbling it's going to be a great time we want to see you out here again from noon to four you can get in free at the western idaho fair. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a now defunct federal jail, which once held mobsters and terrorists, is now being considered to house migrants. The Manhattan Metropolitan Correctional Center is just one of many locations that New York City's mayor is suggesting to use. The facility has long been criticized for its deteriorating condition and was shut down back in 2021 following Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. But city officials believe it could help ease overcrowded homeless shelters, where migrants have been staying. An estimated 100,000 have arrived in the city since last year. Well, hey, if you have kiddos at home and you're looking for another fun and educational event this weekend, you're in luck. Our friends Alon and Chris with Kids 92.3 tell us more about an event that you may want to check out. Take a look. Hey, it's Alon and Chris from Kissin 92.3 to tell you about some cool events happening here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. And if your kid likes creative crafts, story time sessions, Check. STEM experiments, Check. maybe free book giveaways. Ooh, yes, please. Yeah. It's a celebration of the young child going on tomorrow. Yeah, Julia Davis Park is when it's uh, going down. All that and, and more educational stuff happening at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, that is tomorrow at Julia Davis Park. Well, folks, back here one last time at the uh, Western Idaho Fair, and I'm here at the gates right now, Expo Idaho, where you can get in for free from noon to four if you bring a donation to the Idaho Food Bank. Now, folks, we're seeing some clear skies outside this morning. It's smelling a lot better out here than it did over in the livestock barn, but we're going to continue to see these hazy conditions over the next couple of days, not only here in the Treasure Valley, but up in the mountains as well. Now, the mountains getting the worst of that haze as that fire continues to burn near Lake Cascade. Now, that strong high pressure system, that's been with us for some time to move away from the gem state this along with that weak trough of low pressure should move out of the or that moved through the region yesterday that's why those highs will drop out of the hundreds today now over the next two days we're looking at some smoky sunshine today we're waking up to those mostly clear skies we'll continue to see those clear skies for most of the day by this evening we'll see some spotty showers pop up around the treasure and the long valley today and then conditions should be mostly dry as we head into tomorrow morning now we'll see those clear skies continue into tomorrow morning but then as we head into the afternoon we'll start to see some clouds roll in those partly cloudy skies going to stick around through tomorrow evening we may see some more showers pop into the Treasure Valley and over into the mountains as well. Now moving to the seven day forecast, high temperatures in the mid 90s both today and tomorrow will drop down into the upper 70s. That's going to be on Sunday, Monday and on Tuesday. And we're looking at some showers on both Sunday and on Monday here in the Treasure Valley. But then as we head into Wednesday, those high temperatures are going to jump up into the mid 80s and will likely be in the upper 80s on Thursday as that sunshine returns. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperature is going to drop all the way down into the upper 60s on Sunday and they'll stay in the upper 60s on Sunday or Monday and Tuesday on Monday and Tuesday. We'll see some scattered showers on Monday and Tuesday, but then those partly cloudy skies should come back out as we head into Tuesday. Then by Thursday, those high temperatures are going to be in the mid 70s over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasili. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take one last live look out there at 651 this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister.
Good morning on Chinden. Eastbound, we have heavy traffic between Canada Road and Star Road. Star Road northbound to Chinden is looking a little busy now as well. And on Five Mile, northbound and southbound, there's utility work at Overland Road blocking lanes. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Friday off, start it with some team traffic updates on KBOI. You can get those on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News, homelessness is up in the U.S. Why one area in Washington seems to be struggling so much with the crisis, despite heavy spending to try and solve it. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.54. Welcome back. Our Sinclair sister station in Seattle, Washington, reporting the rise in homelessness. And a new report suggests this is a national trend touching nearly every corner of the country. King County receiving nearly $1 billion in federal funding for homeless, housing, and community development since 2019. Yet the homelessness rate went up 14% in the past year. The numbers of you know percent increases in, in cities and states across the United States at this point um, have been a scary trend. A Wall Street Journal report this week saying that more Americans are ending up homeless at a record rate. It lists multiple issues ranging from the explosion of fentanyl and drug abuse in the West to a lack of affordable housing. Well, more cases of the West Nile virus being reported in the West. Down in Fresno County, California, the Department of Public Health says two people have tested positive for the West Nile virus. Health officials do expect that number to go up. They warn to continue to protect yourself from mosquito bites. West Nile can bring unpleasant symptoms like headaches, joint pains, rashes, vomiting, even diarrhea. Most people do recover fully with no issues. But about 1 in 150 patients develop brain and nervous system infections that can be deadly. And another option for $35 a month insulin, Amazon Pharmacy, the latest to join the price range. The significant price drops come after the Inflation Reduction Act, capping Medicare insulin products at $35 a month. Some do offer discounts at $25 or free to diabetics who qualify. Well, it's time now for our question of the day. Half of us will not travel without doing this. What is it? That answer was bringing our own pillow. Good to know. Well, our next newscast coming up today at 11. And of course, the Western Idaho Fair kicks off today. Be sure to go from noon to four. Admission is on us with a canned food for the Idaho Food Bank. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here at 11.